In this demonstration, we will install DSCP server role on Windows Server 2019. If you would like to learn how to install DSCP server on a Linux system, please check my other video posted earlier. Let's open Server Manager. For this demonstration, I'll be using my previous Windows server that has already been domain promoted. If you click on the local server, you can see I have the SSServe server with the local domain sanuja.local. You do not need to have a domain promoted server to run DSCP role in Windows Server 2019. However, having a domain promoted server do help with integration of different components in Active Directory domain services. To add a DSCP role, on the server manager, go to Manage, and in the Manage menu, select Add Roles and Features. On this window, click Next. Under Select Installation Type, we will choose the role-based or feature-based installation. Click Next. Under Select Destination Server, we will select the server, your server that is listed under the server pool. If this is a standalone server just like mine, it should only have that local server. And then click Next. Under Roles, select the DSCP server. When you select it, it will give you a pop-up with additional features that is required to run the DSCP server. Make sure you have Include Management Tools checked off and click Add Features. Click Next. Under Features, you don't need to select anything. Just click Next and then Next. And in here, I always select Restart the Destination Server automatically if required in my lab environment. However, if you are in a production environment, you need to make sure the restart of your Windows server, if required, is not going to impact your current users or services. So because I'm in a lab environment, I'm just gonna select that option and then click Install. After the installation has been completed, you will have the link to open the DSCP configuration wizard. You can click on it and it'll open up that window. On the description, it'll give you some information about your DSCP server. And in this particular situation, we will be creating the DSCP server inside a domain promoted server. So it's gonna give you a warning saying that the security group will be added for DSCP administrators and the DSCP users. Click commit and it'll give you a completions message. In here it says creating security groups and it is done. It takes only a few seconds and click close. And you can close this window so you can proceed with to the next step. The next step is to open the DSCP window so we can do the configurations. Go to Tools menu from the top, select DSCP, and it will open the DSCP configuration window. On here, on the left-hand pane, you will see your server. My server is named SSServe, so it will show up as SSServe, whatever your name for your server will show up there. And if you expand that menu, you will have two pools, sorry, two sections, one for IPv4, another for IPv6. And currently, it only has the basic configurations and there are no DSCP pools running on this server. You can also see that this IPv4 and IPv6 sections are marked in red, 
show, that means they are not currently authorized or running. If you click on your main server up here, and if you right click, you can see the authorized button is open. The authorized option is available. That means it has not yet been authorized. Before we go ahead and authorize, what we're gonna do, I'm going to add a DHCP scope to the IPv4. Select the IPv4 from the left-hand pane, right-click, select New Scope. Under New Scope, click Next, and you can name your scope anything you like. In my case, I'm gonna say Sanuja Local Network, and I'm gonna descri describe it as DSCP pool for local. You can name anything you like and you can put a description anyway, any description you like. It is just so that you can identify it. Click next and I'm going to use the starting IP address of 192.168.1.2 and the ending IP address of 192.168.1.2 dot 100. This may look familiar with what we did on our Linux system. It is asking the similar configuration information as the Linux, except Windows have a nice graphical user interface so that you can do this on a wizard instead of you're going to do it on the dscp.conf type of file. Now notice when I enter 192.168.1.2 and 192.168.1.100, it automatically populate the bottom part of this window. This is because it recognized that it is a slash 24 subnet, and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. You can click next, and then it will ask for what IP addresses needed to be excluded. So I'm gonna enter 192.168. 1.2 to 192.168.1.10 and I'm going to click add. These exclusion IP addresses will not be included in your DSCP pool. I have used the first few IP addresses for my static IPs on my servers. You should never include your static IP addresses in the DSCP pool. The GSCP pool should be outside of those static IP addresses. This way, we will avoid any conflict by having two machines having the exact same IP address due to statically assigned IP as well as the GSCP pool handing over the IP. So as you can see in here, the 192.168.1.2 to 192.168.1.10 is being used by my statics IP machines such as my servers. So I'm excluding that from our DSCP pool. Click next and it'll ask for the least duration time and I'm going to leave it as at default eight days but you can configure as you as whatever your needs and then click next. Under configure DSCP option I'm going to say yes to do you want to configure the DSCP options for this scope now because I'll be deploying this as soon as possible. So we're gonna click next. And it's gonna ask you, what is your router? Now, in my particular configuration, I have already installed RS on this server. So you can see I have remote access management, routing and remote access installed. Because my routing is done through RS, in this Windows server, I'm going to give this server's IP address of 192.168.1.3 as the IP address for the default gateway. So 192.168.1.3 and I'm going to add that. However, if you have a different RS server other than this server or you will be using your own router make sure you give the router's IP address for the default gateway. 
This settings will let your DSCP client knows which default gateway to use. Then we will click next and they're going to ask you what would be your domain. So our domain going to be sanuja.local for this demonstration. If your service domain promoted, you should give that particular domain name for your domain system. And then we're going to click next. And for wind servers, we're just going to leave it blank. And we're going to click next. And we're going to select the option called yes, I want to activate this scope now. And we're going to click next. Then click finish. And now you will see the options that you have created on your left hand pane of your DSCP um, window. You'll see the name of your DSCP scope. You will see the address pool. And you will see the other options that you set. We are not done yet because as you can see in here, both IPv4 and IPv6 have this red arrow. That means it is not active yet. What we need to do to activate this DHCP server is to authorize this particular service in this server. To do that, select your server from the left hand pane, right click, select the option called authorize. It'll take a few seconds and it should authorize on the server. Now, if you click on this green refresh button, your IPv4 and IPv6 section should have this green check mark now. So now this DSCP server is currently active and handing in addresses to end clients. Let's see if we can actually get a lease to one of our Windows 11 computers. Currently, as you can see under the address leases, there's nothing showing up. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a lease to an end device. We will be using a Windows 11 professional computer as our DSCP client end device. First, go to start and I'm going to control panel. And I will make sure that under network and internet, I have the ethernet card or the interface is set up into DSCP. So under IPv4, under properties, I can see that I have already have this particular computer in the DSCP configuration. Now, if you go to command prompt by typing CMD, press enter, it will open the command prompt. And if I go IP config slash all, I should have a DSCP IP address from the pool that we just created. This computer is in the same network as the DSCP uh, system, and it is receiving the DSCP IP address from the DSCP server in the Windows server. So in here, we have the IPv4 address of 192.168.1.12, which is within the DSCP pool that we have configured in the Windows DSCP server. And it has a default gateway of 192.168.1.3. And it also shows that it is a DSCP that is giving out this IP address. To test this, we can also try to get a new IP address or renew this IP address. To do that, we can go IP config slash release and add IP config slash renew and press enter. A moment later, it did obtain an IP address within the pool, which is 192.168.1.12. And if you go IP all, it shows that the DSCP server is pointing to 192.168.1.3. Another thing I want to point out, if I go to control panel, if I go to network connections,
in here, I have set up the D, uh, DNS as manual, but you can actually put both at automatic and you can click OK. And if I do the same thing I did a few minutes ago, which is IP config release, sorry, slash release. Again, it'll it will obtain the IPv4 address from the pool, and if I go IP config slash all, oh, you can see the default gateway DSCP server is the same, and the DNS servers are set up by our RS on the Windows server, and it clearly says it's coming from there. And we also have the network connection local domain sanuja.local. If you go back to your Windows Server and if you open your DSCP window and on the left hand pane under IPv4 click on addresses address leases and click this refresh button it'll show that Windows computer that just connected. And because I have named the Windows computer as Win11 Pro X64 WS1, it actually showing the particular Windows server, sorry, Windows end client, DSCP client on this screen, which proves that this particular Windows 11 computer is obtaining its DSCP IP address from this Windows server DSCP pool. You have the option to delete or even actually block DSCP IP addresses from here. And there are a few other configurations you can go through to fine tune your DSCP server. And that's how you install a DSCP server on a Windows Server 2019. Thank you.